ready for today. I hope you're excited as we are excited and uh, to see God's wonderful plan for the couple coming together. And uh, so this yes. morning, uh, welcome to Gables City Church. This is the way that we do things. And we can see some pretty faces again. And see some new faces. It's good to have you with us in the house for, for Bites and Campus Big Day. We are so excited for them and humbled for, for God's new beginnings for their lives. So yeah, just before we start, it's not just to do the Greeks and Alphas, so we get the church behind and then we can go to that we've got a plan for us for today. So if you can have the announcements on the board. Yes, today is Sunday. <laughs> Alright, uh, thank you, next one. Okay, please, we are broadcasting this via Wi-Fi, uh, via YouTube, sorry. So please switch up your Wi-Fi, switch your phone, your play mode, and if you want to see yourself, you can see yourself on YouTube. And uh, so we are, we are praising God for His faithfulness. We are going in HD. So if you really want to know what you're talking to me, you know it's that. Okay. So we are playing that. So please put your phone on silent or on play mode and just be with us, please. All staff, remember to talk to your wife us for, the, for this morning's service. Thank you. And then next one. All right. There will be no to the church this morning. Oh, so sorry about that, guys. But definitely next week. Uh, thank you to all the children's church leaders for helping us give you God's word to the kids so they can understand what, what, what it's all about and uh, to see Christ manifest himself in our children's lives. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Hopefully all the children's church leaders, um, do you understand the SMS I've seen through the WhatsApp? Yes. About these sermons and being given out. So uh, just uh, if you need any questions, speak to me afterwards, please, about that. Alright, thank you. Then, tomorrow night, there will be SOP. Thanks for further notice. Alright. So, she's not here, so you can do it again. Okay. <laughs> so, there will be some people for further, for further notice uh, tomorrow night. Uh, School, of, School of the Prophets. Go on back, if it's your class. And uh, from 8.30, uh, 16 to 18.30. So, uh, please make sure that you pay. If you have paid for watching or uh, for downloading on the website, please make sure that you pay for no advice. Okay. So that we can activate you guys. If you have problems with the website, downloading or opening up, please speak to me. Alright. Thank you to the new that have communicated. I will send you a link that you have been activated. If you can't be right, speak to me. Okay, I'm really I'm available to you for that. So that uh, we can use the website fully that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Alright. Then life at Alice on Wednesday night. And then uh, life at GCC also at 7 o'clock here. Alright. So uh, let's get ready for that what God is doing, changing in our lives. Are you perfectly experiencing what God is doing? Yes. Are you understanding what, how we're busy forming God into our lives? Yes. Alright, so let's do it together. Let's know more and more what God wants to do within our lives. Amen. Alright, then Thursday night band practice. Woo-hoo! Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> um, so band practice uh, on Thursdays, 5.30. So uh, please be there and be ready for that. Thank you. And then tithes and offerings, the door as you exit on the left hand side, let's give to God, which is God's. Cause in Gateway City Church, we believe money. Outside. God. Inside. Okay, so, Ch- 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 Charlene, why do we believe this? So that money doesn't Amen. That doesn't determine who we are as people. Amen. All right, so let's do it practically. Let's kick money's butt outside and uh, let's uh, give to God, which is God's. Amen. Amen. National Women's Day. Huh. Please note that church offices will, as well as DIG, will be closed on Tuesday. Ah, sorry. Okay, so women in, well, sorry, women is blend of beauty and brains. We can put all. The, I didn't say this. Hold on. Women is blended of beauty and brains. Who can put all these things? Who can put all things right? Happy Women's Day. Oh, uh, yeah, this day. Yeah. Okay, so that's Women's Day on Tuesday. So church offices will be closed. Church will be open tomorrow, but on Tuesday the church will be closed as well. All right, so give all the beautiful ladies a rest. I read an SMS once that said, Women is an amazing thing. You give her something small, she makes something big. You give her something, she makes a child. You give her a bread, she gives you a meal. You give her four walls, she gives you a house. You give her trouble, she gives you a big load of trouble. (laughs) 
I won't be exactly like I read the SMS, but it's pretty much what it said. But a woman is an amazing thing. So have this Tuesday. Bless the woman around you. If it's your mother or your mother's mother or your auntie's mother or the lady next to you or whatever like that, bless them because it's Women's Day. All right, carry them a bit and uh, let's uh, bless them for the day at hand. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to see God's fulfillment of His Word? Which is with two or more gathered, there He is. Because God is here this morning. And God's Word says, there's nothing more beautiful for Him in His in his life, or in, in life, there's nothing more for him more beautiful than a man and woman coming together for the purpose of him glorifying himself. Amen. 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 Pastor Stefan, over to you, sir. Have a blessed morning further. Thank you. We do the other one. Great. <laughs> he says better now. Pastor Tasha would say she's got that effect on electronic devices. So I can't take the same credit. <laughs> I would, wouldn't dare take the same credit. Okay. I want us to, to really join our hearts in this morning. Whether it's your first time, whether it's your umptieth time, let's join our hearts and really, really contribute to a picture. And to a heart's desire. Because the truth is Catherine and Brighton has this desire to be united in God's house. And we've got the privilege as working colleagues or as friends or as family to make their picture work. The truth is this morning is actually about the two of them. But what we bring is our gift to them. Not, I, I'm not speaking about the gift you've got lined up in the car. I'm speaking about your attitude. I'm speaking about your joy. I'm speaking about the expression on your face. The things that they will see when they come in. I think at the end of the day, the best thing we can give to them is to be happy with them. And to be happy for them. Okay, so let's really get... If you fe fe felt strange, it's your first time, I hope you don't feel strange anymore. Let's let go of all those things. We are one people under God. The banner at the outside that says, faces without races, one nation under God, that's who we are. So you are extremely welcome in God's house, whether you're gateway or visitor. Let's really make this morning special for Brighton and Catherine. So you are so, so welcome. Okay, and from here onwards, we are going to play it as they come. We are going to work with them. And we trust God to really, really be present in a ceremony that's not just about people. Okay, so please enjoy, enjoy your fellowship. Speak to one another, meet one another. And as they come, we will, we will take you through the morning and take you through all the things that will be happening this morning. But welcome. And please have a blessed morning with everyone.
Christmas, the, the bride has arrived. So everyone is just doing the, the, the final, final touches. And then she, she will come in. But I would like to ask that if we can remain seated as what Andara. If we can remain seated when she walks down the aisle, it's just easier for everyone to see. So we, we're not going to stand up as she walks down the aisle. So please be aware of that. And, and as we've said, let's make our gift to them an excellent and a great memory. Let's make that our commitment this morning. Our commitment is to give them a gift of a wonderful memory. Okay?
Brighton and Catherine. I, I think we all agree that your wife We've all seen her once as she came down the aisle. And I know what your heart did. It was like, poof. And all of our, we were like, wow. But I think the fair thing to do is, because the truth is, this is once. And I think it would be great if you can show your wife again to, to everyone who's in any case here to see how, how lovely she's looking. So if you could maybe show Catherine again to everyone. How will the turning work easiest? <laughs> I want you to soak it up. I want you to experience all the joy because he has a congregation full of people. And as we spoke, is our biggest gift to the two of you will be to give you a great memory of this day. Yes. That is our commitment, That's right. is to give you a memory. A memory of people who's your friends, who's your family, who's your colleagues, but a memory. So please relax as much as you can and please soak up all the woo -woo -woo -woos and, and everything that comes your way because everything that's coming is true. Yes. Here's a group of people behind you who's truly excited for the two of you. Yes. Who truly knows how, how long you've been longing for this. Yes. And then I've got a surprise for them. You're actually ours. <laughs> so I know there's brothers and Mom, mamas and everyone, but you know what? According to us, you're ours. Yes. And we are just as excited for the two of you. Please know that as we go through this morning, it's an immense honor. It's my honor to do this with you. But I don't want to keep you standing too long. So let's go. The, the legal side I'm going to, to read because then I don't miss anything. And it goes like this, and after I've read it, Brighton, you must answer nice and loud. And then I will ask the same question to Catherine, and she'll answer nice and loud. And we'll go from there. So, do you, Brighton, Chiwacha, declare... That as far as you know, there's no lawful impediment to your proposed marriage with Catherine Simba here. Here present. And that you call all here. That's our biggest honor as all of us here. That you call all here present to witness that you take Catherine here present, this Catherine, as your lawful wife. Do you, Catherine Simba, declare that as far as you know, there is no lawful impediment to your proposed marriage with Brighton Chiwacha here present, and that you call all of us here present to witness that you take Brighton as your lawful husband? Then I would like to ask Brighton and Catherine if you could give recognition to one another for your commitment towards one another and you know how you can say it best. Because people in front can say it one way, but you can say it best. And I would like to ask the two of you to give recognition to one another, please. My sunshine, you are, you are everything I like in life. You are the reason I wake up every day. My love to you will never end. 
I love you. My Mochi, <laughs> you have always been the strength, always, and I'll always love you as we continue this journey together. Thank you so much for always being there for me, for your love and your care. And I love you so much. Thank you. Those of us that know them know that's the truth. And there's no easier way to walk life than to walk it in complete truth. And now, Brighton and Catherine, the rings is somewhere. They are coming. But I would like you to give one another the right hand. And then you put the rings on. And then after that, I'll have the privilege of declaring you. But now, please give one another the right hand. And the ring of covenant. Because a ring doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. It's a perfect start to finish. And our desire for Catherine and Brighton is that from start to finish, there will be no beginning, there will be no end. There will be just one, one full life filled with what God has planned for them. So may as you give your rings of commitment and of covenant to one another, and as you will often look at them, may you remember that what God has started, He will always complete. And may you realize that, well, there's no room for ending. Because I can't really see the beginning or the end. What has started will finish well. It will finish well. And that's our commitment. And if you're any, anything like I was, I played with it often afterwards. But please remember, as you give your rings of covenant to one another. Feel good. <laughs> Sometimes in life we are quick to forget. And in a morning like this, I would like us and them to soak it up. Because unless we put it down there and say, This is what I committed for, this is what I've been waiting for, we sometimes rush over life. But as you've got the rings of covenant, and as you've declared your unfailing love to one another, it's my honor to now declare that Brighton and Catherine here present have been married in the kingdom of their God, in His house as they desired. But you have been married now. And now, this one I always forget, you may kiss your wife. <laughs> Friends, family, colleagues, it's my greatest honor to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Chiwacha.
But the truth about every covenant and any covenant is that it cannot be complete unless God is present. Man to man has got limitations. It always fails somewhere along the line. But whenever God is present and He joins us, nothing can separate us. Because Scripture says what God has joined, let no man separate. And therefore I would like to ask Pastor Yandre and Pastor Rita to join Brighton and Catherine for communion. Because this covenant will be sealed, not by rings only, but by their unfailing love for Christ and Christ alone. As they are recommitting or committing their marriage, it's a great time for you to recommit yours. There where you are seated, maybe with your spouse. If you're not married yet, then it's a great time to recommit your life. I think the most important thing to say now is breathe. <laughs> Nothing that we do now can change anything. And it's for, great for us to welcome you. We've known you, but we are knowing you more and more. And it's great for us. And it's my privilege to share a short word with you. 
I'm actually speaking to the two of you, but I trust that everyone will be hearing. And there's, but there's two scriptures and three things. So there's basically five things we're going to cover this, this morning. And the, and the two scriptures is, uh, the one is found in Proverbs that says, He who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. And it's a scripture that I've been thinking about quite a bit. Because the truth is, if it was about being married, then everyone around us should be having favor with God. Because if it, if it wanted to say, he who gets married finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord, then it would have said that. But it says, he who finds a wife. And I started to ask God, but how does it look when you find a wife and not just get married? But then we need to go back to the original pattern. Because you know what, Brighton, is that we have created a lot of things from the, the pattern after Adam and Eve were kicked out. But the original was when they were found in the garden. That's the original place. And I realized one thing, Catherine, is that it's easier than people make it. It's simpler than they make it. But then we need to go back to the original. And the original was like this. And that's in Genesis. So that's the second scripture for those of you that's counting. The second scripture is in Genesis. You can go and look at it. But it says, God made the man. So you cannot find a wife if you're not a man willing to be made by God. If you're a self-made man, you'll never find a wife. You'll get married, you'll have children, but you won't find a wife. Because the original pattern was a man made by God. And then God looked at that man and He said, Hey, he's alone, he's not good. And unless we can see what God sees and say, it's not good. As long as we think it's good for me to be the way I am and all self-sufficient, you're not ready to find a wife yet. You're ready to marry because people marry easily, but you're not ready to find a wife. So, it wasn't good. Face it, Brighton, it wasn't good. But then God came and He couldn't find one for you. From every single thing that God made, He couldn't find one that fitted Adam. And then He did the biggest thing of all. He put Adam to sleep. While you were sleeping, He made a Catherine. And then, He brought her to the man. A marriage that doesn't start in a man made by God, a woman made by God, cannot claim he who finds a wife. Because if you claim that one, but you're not willing for God to make you, you will become proudful and arrogant, because now I have done this. The biggest thing you need to know, Catherine, when you look at Brighton is, he's made by God. Yes. Not once off, continually. Yes. Daily. As I was thinking about you, I got this thought this morning that said, this day is like a new beginning. Brighton and Catherine, this day, according to God, is a new beginning. And then we need to look at one another differently. You need to look at in the original way and say, God, how is it that you are making this man? And you have to look at Catherine and say, God, how is it that you are making this woman? And then because we see the one who's making us, 
And we realize I'm never fully made. We realize I'm not that on my own. I'm not that smart. Then we start finding a wife. And I want to say we find one another. And a lot of people don't find. They never find. They get married. They get children. They do all the right things, but they never find the one that was given by God. Because some people are arrogant enough to think, Jackie, it was my good looks that got this one for me. I found her. When he was nothing, I found him. You were nothing until I found you. There's people like that. There's marriages like that. And because we don't realize we were able to find someone made by God, formed by Him, someone that loves Him more than they love me, we never go into the rest. And the rest says, once you find, you obtain favor. And Scripture says, seek and you will find. And I want to encourage the two of you. I want to encourage all of us. I want to challenge us and say, never stop seeking to find the man that God is making. Catherine, never stop seeking to find a Brighton of God. Brighton, never stop seeking to find a Catherine of God. We're not looking for the stuff. We're looking for the real thing. The real thing is someone made by God, made for God. And I've got the immense privilege of saying, she's my wife. But I always realize one thing. God, she's yours first. So I better watch my step. As a husband, I better watch my step. Because she's someone else's. And as a wife, I better watch my step because he's someone else's. He's God's first. So I trust for the two of you and I trust for all of us that we will never get tired of seeking. That we will never get tired of discovering one another. It's like this. If God says it's the first day of a new beginning. And I want to say let go of the past. What you think you know about one another. Let go of that. Say God. I want to find the Brighton that you are forming. I want to find the Catherine that you are shaping. And after finding them, I want to protect them. I want to guard them with all my life. So that's the first thought. The second thought is, I trust for you to a love that will cover Because scripture says love covers a multitude of sins. And when I look at you too and I look at all of us and this is a thought that I've been facing quite a bit the last few, few, few months almost. It's unless we operate in that love there's enough things to find along the way that we say no I don't like or I do like or I disagree. Life isn't built upon perfect. Not one of us sitting here can model a perfect marriage. But we can share some of the secrets. And one of the secrets is, number one, keep on looking. Keep on seeking. Never get tired of discovering. Second secret, carry a lot of love. Because if you carry pure love, Catherine and Brighton, those times when you really don't understand your your wife or your husband, because it does happen. Unfortunately, we sometimes don't understand. Men is funny to understand and women also. <laughs> They're laughing because they know it's true. We can now be very like, you'll never face. Hey, you need love. If scripture didn't know that we'll need love along the way, it wouldn't tell us love will cover a, lo a multitude of sin. Whenever you face difficulty, Don't go into this trap. This is the way old married couples will sometimes do it. The foolish ones. They will say, If my friend would only change. Once my friend changes, all will be fine. Who, how many times do I still have to speak about this? 
The happiness of a marriage isn't found in the other one changing. It's found in you changing and covering the other one's weaknesses with more love. Don't ask for more change. Ask for more love. God, give me more love so that I can cover. While you are working on this one that I found, while you are working, help me to love as you are loving. Help me to cover with the love that you are covering with. Don't demand change of others. Demand more love of yourself. Have one demand only. God, I want to love more. Because whom you have given me is precious. Precious. Handmade. It's not made in China. It's not mass produced. It's handmade. It's handmade by the living God himself. And we need to cherish that. Do you not... Brighton, you're not part of this production line. Catherine, you're not part of a production line. And therefore, demand more love from yourself. And the third secret I want to share is there's always a way out of difficulty. Because Scripture says, whatever we face, he provides the way out. The world has made divorce the way out. God says, I have made a way out. And that way is found in Him. And I can't sing the song that well, but that song that we've been singing in Gateway the last few Sundays, when I don't know what to do, what to do, I keep my eyes fixed on you, fixed on you. That's my desire for the two of you. That when you don't know what to do, when you sometimes just don't know what to do next, I've tried everything, we've tried everything, what next? Then I can guarantee you, you can look around in Gateway, you will find people that say, Right and Catherine, don't worry. Don't worry. He's faithful. Do one thing. Look at him more than you look at one another. Face him more than you just face one another. And sometimes step back and just look at him again and say, God, I fixed my eyes so much on the one that you've given that I stopped fixing my eyes on you. Yes, have eyes only for her. That's true. But oh, have eyes for him first. Yes, have eyes only for him. Oh, but have eyes for him first. He's always the provider. He provides the perfect way out of difficulty. Those are the secrets that I would love, to, that I had the honor of sharing with you this morning. And I trust for the two of you that you will continue having a marriage. A Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Chiwocha marriage that will not look like tradition. That will look like none of us here. But it will look like Him. And as you grow into being a marriage like His, you will see, you will find us on the same road. Because we are all walking the same road. We are all becoming marriages like Him. And because we are all doing that, we all join in in the same road. And eventually we end up in the same place. But I want to bless the two of you with that. I trust that you will know that this day is, a, is like a new beginning. It's like none other. And I want you to keep on seeking and finding the new that God is forming. Let go of the old. Let go of what you think of one another. Let go of what you think you know of one another. But you haven't seen nothing yet. He's going to keep on unfolding it. As you broke the bread, 
you will keep on breaking open and say, this is what I want to see. This is what I want you to see. This is what I'm doing. Be blessed in being His. Mr. and Mrs. Chiwocha. I would then like to ask Pastor Tasha to please come to the front. Would the brides might just come and help her? Bring her to the front. You can come. You can help her as much as you can, as long as you don't trip her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Stefan, for an amazing word hearing from God. I trust that it's been a blessing to all of you. Yes. Yes. Good morning, Gateway. Good morning. Good morning. Really want to give you a lot of acknowledgement this morning for accommodating this wedding. You know, um, it's easy. I was looking at the board. It's easy for us to say races without faces. Faces without races. Whoever's got a face of a race. It's when the tire hits the road, whether we can build the kingdom for God with different people. Yes. Talking is cheap. Yes. Talk is cheap. It's when we put our blood together, which is red, red. Red plus red equals red. Yes. It's when we, God can find us faithful, whether we are unable, and I'll just put this a bit softer, when we are able to live what we say. Yes. It's, and the only reason why we can do it is because we are unconditionally serving God. This is not about us. It's never been about us, you know. But I really want to say this morning, and I want to really salute you as a church that used to be a church with one way of doing that in the last 20 years have accommodated so many new people, so many new things, you know. And for everyone visiting this morning, you are welcome in the house of God. This is God's house. And what God wants is what we want. That's why there's still a house this morning. So know that we appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Make sure, excuse me, this week that you attend. We're going to start. I hope the cold weather is gone. Over that we can kick in and start running what we have to. Because God is intensely busy with all of us. Yes. I hope that you are busy with God too. Yes. And that lots of changes are busy coming into your lifestyle. Because if you are not changing, then you are not busy with God. And you will not find the wife unless you are part of finding God. Yes. The Pastor yes. Stefan's word this morning is a must-be-done word. Yes. The hearing is not that easy or that difficult. It must be done. So this is our church service for the week. Know that um, also it is important that you follow your relationships up. I will not marry any Tom, Dick, and Harry in this house. Yes. But ever since this, these two people have entered my life, they have opened their hearts. They've been very honest. They've grown on me. They've grown on me. They've, and it's not because of anything. I, I, human beings are human beings. But they've lived up to the standard. They've been available for my input. I've disagreed and they have listened. And I have set the pattern and they followed. And that's why you are here this morning. And it was your desire to get married in the house of God before you go out. To a very big, huge wedding. But you wanted God to know about you first. And that's why I gave you the honor that we have, each and every one, to be in his house. So when I pray for you this morning, it's because God is so faithful. And because God has given each of us a place to come in by grace. Nobody deserves being here in any case. So, And God knows. And so, you know, in our lifestyles, it's so different. But we have tried and, and we, have, we have made a decision. The labola is becoming part of our lives and the pastor must get all the animals. <laughs> we can learn from one another. And I'm learning. So, you know, and, and we now, especially if we can now start building a new church and whatever, whoever's wanting to get married from now on, you're going to pay for the new auditorium. This is it, brother, or no marriage. We've learned from Brighton. It's not going to take that long either. 
No, but you know what? It's we're so thankful. And even though we differ in our ways of doing, we could bring it together. I want to say to you something I've thought of when I sat there. If it's not for God, no nation will have something in common. We are too widespread in the ways that we do and think things. But once we've moved with God, we have become in such unity that people don't dare touch you. It's like Pastor Stefan says, you are ours. Why? Because we've given our hearts to one another. And we're making things work together. Together. We had such fun dressing this lady up this morning. Shame this poor girl is going to sleep because she's exhausted. <laughs> so many new different girls around. So everybody's pulling another string and another thing. And some more makeup. But she knows what she wants. And that's what it's so great. Thank you this morning for everyone that helped. Thank you everyone for you guys for being available for Brighton. Thank you Gateway that we can show God that we are here for him. And that every person is important. People have always been important to me. This is nothing new. Yeah. But God will find us faithful right to the end. Yes. Okay, so it was a great honor. It's done. <laughs> We've planned months ago. And now it's done. You look very pretty, my sweetheart. But I must say, this is handsome. <laughs> this is handsome from top. I tell you what, you better take good care of this man. I trust this morning that when you go out and you go home, that your home will be near. You know, it's been done by you this way. If you had met me earlier, you wouldn't have stayed together for so long. I would have kept you aside till the labola was paid and brought you before God because you are his, no one else's. But when I sent you home from this place this morning, I trust that nothing will be the same. You have to carry this woman into the house. Not because of religion. It's just so nice, man. <laughs> okay. Shut the door behind you. And start something so completely new. Amen. Right. Amen. Father, I bring before you this morning this couple. It is our honor, Lord, to know them. But it's even more greater to think that when you work in a man and a woman, and you wanted them to get to know you better, you trusted Gateway City Church yes. on the corner of Yorison and Klein. Yes. And you brought them into this house for your use, Lord. Yes. Father, I praise you and thank you, God, that they love you so dearly. Yes. Thank you that sunshine was willing, Lord God, to let go of. Yes. And Father, you know what I spoke to you about them last night? And I want to ask, I reminded you of a Shantae. <laughs> I reminded you of the impossible things, God. And we trust you this morning for covenant miracles. Trust you for covenant miracles. Trust you, God, with all our heart. All our heart, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we've had many miracles happening. Father, even to those that weren't even... Oh, God, but you know. So we trust this morning. Thank you that you will give Brighton a lot of wisdom. And that you will give... Kathy, a lot of wisdom, Lord. We look to your face this morning and say, what an honor. We thank you for covenant friends that's willing to become bridesmaids. And whatever the men is called, thank you, God, for all and everyone. Thank you for the children on Friday at the school, getting things ready. Thank you for Betty catering and, and Ursula photos and just the whole church and every pastor jumping. And God, thank you for your house. We don't want to be anywhere else. We want to be where you are. Because where you are, things are really so precious. We give you the rest of the day. And ask, Lord, and thank you, God, that as they go, and they go and get married with so many other people, that this, this day will be the foundation. They will know. God knows. And it will be done according to your will and according to your plan. In Jesus' name. Amen. Music team, come, let's sing the two songs, especially the one that they really want for this day is Jesus, come and be the center. Why don't you give us the flowers and you just hold the man's hands. He's looking so lonely. <laughs> Shame. He hasn't had a lot of attention. You can stand right there. If I want to stand with her, we can sing now. You can. <clears throat> Thank you. 
We want you to be the center this morning, Jesus. We don't want to be full of rituals now. The next few minutes is for you, God, and you alone. It's because of you and you alone, Lord, that we are right here, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your house. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, come and be the center, we pray. Thank you, God. Jesus, be the center of it all. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus, be the center of it all. greater than our past. 
Our future is much greater, God, because we're no longer blind. We're not blind for the things that you want us to see, God. No, we're not willing to listen and obey. We will do your will, God. We will do your will, God. We will do your will, God. What you want is what we want, God. So we say thank you, God. How great. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great are you, Lord. You're great. Mercy. Everything that you've done, even this morning for Brighton and Beth. How great are you, Lord. How great are you, Lord? Come and give us all the recognition. How great is your mercy? Oh, how great are the things, Lord? How great are the things that you have done for me?
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Martin, why don't you just say thank you to God for you? Thank you, Father God, for the day like this, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that you have planned everything and we are just fulfilling what you have planned already. Yes. How great are you, Lord? Yes. We praise your name, Father. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Gateway City Church. Thank you, Pastor T. You are all invited for coffee and some eats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 